Hi, this is Shadi. Today we're going to be looking at the Parisian police jujitsu techniques. So this is a very interesting footage. It's from the first half of the 20th century. So what I like about it is that it has a wide range of techniques. It has your grappling techniques that we are very much used to seeing. It also has the dirty tactics such as putting your thumb and fingers in very uncomfortable places and we'll get to that and finally a little bit of striking so this is very much oriented towards self-defense and there is the classical techniques that we are used to seeing and performing on the mats so without further ado the first technique is going to be your classical ude garami so it's coming from a side slap so to speak and you block it and from there you do it from the standing position by extending the arm and then entangling the arm with your own and gripping your wrist and applying pressure on the elbow so the basic form from the ground aspect is here with a bent arm notice the grabbing of the wrists which creates the entanglement hence the name tangled arms and you proceed to lift your elbow and squeeze your palms and from there you put a lot of pressure on the shoulder it's a very classical technique and very efficient you see it in mma today at the highest level another variation is when they are resisting with their elbow and they are extending their arm you can actually target the elbow with a straight arm and from there you do the same you put your weight forward both elbows on the ground and you lift your elbow targeting the elbow this time not the shoulder now here when it comes to the context of weapons and street self-defense you're gonna have to do this and applying the pressure here with rolling your palms they have no option but to let go of the knife and surrender the next one it's gonna be your te gatame you've seen this in many books such as maeda's books and also the roosevelt's jiu-jitsu style that he did back in the day so you grab opposite and cross hand and then from there you put pressure grabbing the wrist and the hand and pushing downwards which creates a lot of pressure either on the shoulder and of course the elbow there is many variations to this one but this is the classical form uh, performed in the standing position in order to get someone subdued and ready for a rest so the next technique it's gonna be also a very brutal technique you've seen this before it's kind of like the serenage but you destroy the elbow because once you turn your back this way you're not gonna just su submit someone because if you stand there and st stay there they're gonna hurt you while you turn your back now this is the dirty tactics that i'm talking about i am not opposed to this but as long as you got your basic grappling narrowed down putting uh, your fingers in uncomfortable places beneath the jaw between the ear and the jaw in order to get them uh, subdued is a great tactic especially in these situations this one here i found it strange that they used the gun and not the knife because of the way it was held it's very reminiscent of maeda's self-defense techniques you hold it and then from there you rotate around it uh, grabbing the wrist and applying pressure on the shoulder um, this i would argue it's a te gatame not ude garami and the reason being is that you're not gripping wrists and entangling the arms uh, fully you're just grabbing the arm and hence the name te gatame or hand hold let's see it here uh, if it's performed in judo context so you see it looks like an ude garami with the same effect however the arms are not fully entangled by gripping the wrist and hence it's a handhold the next is your classical wrist twist or kote gaishi one hand is on the wrist and one hand is on the fingers rotating it 
in order to let go of the knife and put them down. I've discussed this technique recently in an arrest made uh, in, this, in a real situation. So obviously we see this all over the place in Aikido, uh, in Judo and the Kata, and of course old Jiu Jitsu. So it's a great technique to subdue someone, but you know, fighting against a knife, it's always a risk. Now, this one here, it's very interesting. It's kind of like going for a cross choke. However, he lifts the jaw. I think it's a way to put someone down and get on top. Now, here it's very interesting how you deflect those uh, strikes. It's a very good drill to do because we're not boxers on the streets. We're not wearing the gloves. We are trying to defend. So the hands, you can actually use them to deflect while the other can strike. Very reminiscent of Nishio Sensei. He is a very big uh, proponent of striking techniques because he believes that it's the foundation of Aikido and you know, deflecting attacks and then entering into the personal space and striking is a very important element uh, when it comes to self-defense, when it comes to all jujitsu and being very sharp with your reflexes. Um, I really like Nishio's method when it comes to handling uh, Atami and I wish it was practiced way more uh, in kata, in drills. This is what Kano wanted, those reflex training uh, in his last chapter of Mind Over Muscle. He discusses this particular uh, aspect of training and uh, it's very important. So uh, there is just so many things that it can be unpacked. Now these very old footage that were shot from the 1920s and 30s back then you know shooting for hours on end like we do now it wasn't a thing so uh, this two or three minute video showed a lot you know the dirty tactics when someone is trying to grab you you can pressure point but like i said i'm not against pressure points and dirty tactics as long as you have your grappling Na nailed or narrowed down because those dirty tactics alone are not enough sparring training your reflexes training your throwing against a skilled grappler is what gets you to the end so you have your foundation and then on top the cover is those dirty tactics in my opinion so if you have anything to add please let me know down below also consider supporting me on patreon thank you for listening